What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Very glad that you are here. Today's topic is embrace your uniqueness. Embrace your uniqueness. You've got to own who you are. Embrace your uniqueness, own who you are. When I was writing, the first words that came up after I wrote down the title when I was kind of getting in this state about what I want to talk about today are unbridled, unapologetic, full self-expression. Unbridled, unapologetic, full self-expression. This is you. This is you and this is your life independent of everybody. Your parents, your friends, coworkers, people that have known you, they're all living their own life. This life is about you and you alone and what you want and what you want alone for your life, whatever that looks like for you and your own unique individual desires. Maybe you're someone who wants to learn how to live off the land you go take a bunch of survival courses and become a camper and that's your dream but you're stuck in a nine to five job in accounting you should go and pursue what you want to do maybe you love singing karaoke and would love to you know you've always had a passion and talent for singing and you want to be a professional singer musician you got to do that if you want to dr friggin go you know, get into low rider cars and dye your hair blue with pink hot streaks. You should do that. Unapologetic, unbridled self expression. You've got to do this. You've got to do this for so many reasons. And the caveat is as long as you're not hurting anybody or any animals or the environment, go nuts. Do whatever the hell you want to do and screw what everyone else has to say about it because. Everybody's going to have something to say about what you do, who you are, that you should do it this way, but no, you should do it this way, but not do it this way. You got to understand that people are trying to direct other people's lives are trying to do that because they're not directing their own lives. Don't worry about them. They're trying to heal and cover up. They're not trying to heal. They're trying to cover up their own trauma and unresolved emotional issues by controlling others and projecting onto you and other people. Don't worry about them. You've got to live your life for you. Most people are so scared to be who they really are or to express who they really are or who they want to be because they're so worried about what other people are going to think. But most people never stop to think about why do I care so much about what these other people think that don't know me? And then even more so, why do I care so much about what the people that do know me think if they're judging me, if they do know me, then I would assume that they care about me or want me to do well. And if that's the case, then why are they judging me or trying to like put me down when I express myself in a different way that maybe makes them feel uncomfortable? It's their own stuff. It's got nothing to do with you. They're just trying to project their own limitations, their own insecurities, their own unhealed parts of themselves onto you and other people so that they can make themselves feel superior because that's what the ego does. So I started, I really got in the writing flow today, so I'm just gonna read some of this stuff because it was more like paragraphs rather than notes and just me talking today. So as long as you're not hurting other people, any animals or the environment, go for it. Unbridled, unapologetic, full self-expression. So what? You still like troll dolls. Remember the little troll dolls? So what if you still like those? Own it. That's what you like. Who cares what other people have to say? So what you dyed your hair hot pink and cut it in some crazy way. Who cares? Own that, that's what you wanna do. So what, you like uh, country music and cowboy boots? Uh, so what, own it. So what, you like EDM, you like house music, you like to go shake your ass like that. Go do it, own it. So what, you like opera, own it. So what, you're into low rider bikes. I don't know why I keep saying that, that's what keeps coming up. So what, dude, that's your hobby, go and own that stuff. Okay, you don't like any of that stuff, you're the outdoorsy type. Go own that. There'll be other people that like to do outdoorsy stuff, that like to camp and go and swim naked in a lake and be barefoot and hike up a mountain and stuff. There are people that like that. That's not you. You're bougie. You like uh, five-star hotels and nice restaurants. Dope. Go and do that. Own that. 
The most important thing is that you have unbridled, unapologetic self-expression and you do what you want to do independent of the good opinions of other people. Because no matter what you do, there will always be other people that have something to say that you should do it this way or you shouldn't do it at all or it's a good idea or it's not a good idea or I did it this way or he or she does it that way. Who gives a shit? It's exhausting. Aren't you exhausted? If this is you and you're a people pleaser, I used to be. You're worried about what other people think. Maybe you say sorry a lot for things that you don't need to say sorry. So you're doing something and you're like, you're like walking through a hallway and you like get in the way of someone, but they got in your way too. And you go, oh, sorry, like it's your fault. Like you're doing something wrong. You guys are just trying to pass each other, but you feel like you're always like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm worried about like, I just want to be small. You're afraid to take up space because you've been beaten down for so long. And that light of you, every time you shine has been dimmed or taken advantage of and abused. Now you're living in this small box, but you're the person the world needs the most to shine because you're the most genuine and authentic and understand what it's like to be treated like this so you no longer want to be treated like that yourself, but you also don't want others to be treated like that. Don't let outside influences make you feel weird or guilty or, shame or ashamed or awkward about your preferences. Don't. Who cares? Okay, you're gay, you're straight, you're bi, uh, you, you know, um, non-binary, whatever the hell it is, who cares? So what, you're Muslim, you're Christian, you're Buddhist, you're, you're Hindu, uh, you're agnostic, you're atheist, who gives a shit? Be you. That's what this is about. Like, it's, it's crazy how we judge other people for who they are and what their preferences are, but it's like, dude, you have your own preferences and way of doing things too like it's easy for them to judge you we just judge each other because it's this need to feel superior i have that in my notes so i'm just gonna again i'm gonna read this stuff but so many thoughts are coming up right now man i just need you to be you don't let outside influences make you feel weird or guilty or ashamed about your preferences no matter what you do someone will have something to say and like here's an example i always think about it's so funny like You've had your hairstyle this way for like 10 years. You decide to, you're just sick of it. New you, new hairstyle, like let's mix it up. So you cut your hair a certain way. First person you see that you know when you go get your hair cut, they go, mm, like, eh, I don't really like it. I like their old hairstyle better. And so you feel like, oh God, I should change it. I may make a mistake. And then you go about your day and the next three people you see at work or whatever, like your hair looks amazing. I love the new style. Okay, great. And then you go home and, you know, one of your kids or someone else or whatever, some random stranger, well, it would probably be a random stranger giving you a compliment, but whatever. You go home and your kids are like, your hair looks terrible. And then you go to the grocery store and some random stranger's like, oh my God, I just want to say your hair looks amazing. So now you've like, in the course of like a couple hours, seen all these people, you got your hairstyle. Why'd you do it? You did it for you. But yet this guy thinks this way, this girl thinks this way, but he also likes it, but she doesn't like it. And you're just caught in this loop of like trying to please other people or decide how you feel about it based on how other people think. Who gives a shit what any of them think, whether they like it or not? You're doing it because you're doing it for you. Because you wanted to do it for you as you should. Do what you want to do for you. Screw other people what they think, man. Who cares? Whether it's good or bad. Because you've got to tap into your authenticity, who you are and what you really want for yourself. Most people don't. They want to be liked by everybody, but he who is an enemy or a friend to he who is a friend to everyone is an enemy to himself. You're wearing so many people are just wearing so many different masks. They're, I used to be this way. I used to be the master chameleon, the master chameleon. Any and I still I, some of that skill set is transferred over, but it was like a people pleasing way. So whoever I was with, I was just a master of being liked by everybody. But I was never being myself. I was simply being the character that they needed me to be in order to get approval from others, which was my trauma response from being abandoned, neglected, uh, growing up. So I became an expert at being loved and liked by everyone on a superficial level because that was the survival mechanism I developed. But I realized how terrible this was getting older and how miserable I was because I was living all these fake lies and masks of who I needed to be based on the situation. I hated myself because I wasn't in touch with myself because I was being someone different for everyone. And it was terrible. It led me to suicidal depression, all this stuff. I never really developed my own identity, who I want to be and who or what I wanted my life to be like. And the reason why is because since I had to be something to everybody else, 
I would try to do so many things that I didn't really want to do, but that I thought I was supposed to do to fit into this group or that group. I never de really developed my own vision or my own gifts. And I never really experienced a lot of success or fulfillment because that, because I was always doing what everyone else wanted me to do or what I thought I should be doing based on other people's opinions. How'd that work out for me? A lot of depression, a lot of anxiety, uh, a lot of dark times, but we're over that. We've healed a lot of that now. That's where I want you to get to. That's where you're heading. That's why you're watching this video. So you're on your way, my friend. No matter what you do, someone or someone will have something to say, good or bad. What I want you to understand is this, guys. It's just a projection. When somebody wants to put you down, it's just a projection. It may be feedback for self-reflection. So they may say something and you, it may hit you and kind of trigger you go, damn, actually, okay, that's uncomfortable to hear about, but I need to think about this. I'll share this story yesterday. I was talking to someone very close to me and she works in a bar and she was like, you know, she's like in her early forties. And she told me this story, like we're just chatting, catching up. She told me this story and she goes, oh my God, this guy like wanted to fight me last night at the bar. He hit me, I'm like, what do you mean? And she like told me this whole story about this drunk guy and like he backed up like he's gonna hit her and she's like, no, I'm, you know, you're gonna leave. And, this, and I was just like listening to this stuff and I'm like, this is crazy. This person's very close to me. I love her very much, we're, we're very close. So, you know, I, I listened to it, but I'm like, I just told her after, I was like, dude, you love the drama. I was like, you love drama, like you really do. She, and of course she got very defensive. She's like, no, I don't, I don't like it. I just have, I have no control over the people that come to the bar. And I was like, that's true. You don't have uh, people that come into the bar, but you love drama. So you surround yourself in, or with people that will have these things. So you have gossip to talk about, or you put yourself in these situations or you choose this job so you can be around that type of energy. That's a lot of drama and a lot of conflict so that you have some excitement in your life. That's a trauma response. But um, I didn't even get that far, of course, because right when you're hitting on someone's triggers and they're not awake or not willing to open and grow in that way, they get very defensive. And she's like, no, I don't like it. And I was like, I was like, I understand, you know, I understand that you consciously don't like it, but unconsciously there's some kind of payoff, something that you get out of it. It creates excitement in your life, that chaos that you're used to. So you put yourself around people and places and environments and situations that create a lot of drama so that you have that little dopamine fix, like that's your fix. You know, and of course she didn't want to hear what I had to say. So I, you know, and I could tell that she's very resistant to it, but I could also feel that she was also kind of opening up to it that I know he's not just saying this because he doesn't just say things like this. I know he's not just attacking me because he's not like ever trying to attack me or anybody else. Right. That's what happens when you open stuff up for people. A lot of the time they'll get very defensive because you're forcing them to look at uncomfortable parts of themselves. But if you're someone who operates with genuine authenticity, kindness and care for other people, when you say stuff like that, they go, well, I know he's not attacking me, but I'm just asking questions or posing it in a way that opens them up and they feel very uncomfortable. So it can feel like they're getting attacked. But, you know, depending on how you carry yourself and they go, well, I know he's not attacking me. That's just not who he is. So why do I feel so defensive right now? you're enlightening them, you're opening them up. But anyways, they may say something and it may be feedback and the need for self-reflection. Like hopefully I did with this person who's close to me. But if someone's bringing you down, it can also just be a projection. As you heal, you raise your vibration, you get to know yourself. You will easily be able to discern if it's a projection, one of their own limiting beliefs or insecurities being projected in you in the form of like some type of verbal or emotional attack. You're like, yeah, okay, I get it. Um, or you'll know if it's a trigger and you're like, damn, okay, that kind of hurts and it hits home. Like, okay, maybe that is something I need to look at. I.e. how I did with this person who's close to me. Or if someone's like, you know, oh, whatever you're just saying, now you're an idiot. You think you know it all, whatever. And they go, not really, but okay. You know, when people say things and it's like, all right, like I can tell because I'm looking for that type of stuff. I'm looking to be triggered. So when people say something and try to like directly upset me, it's very clear if it's a projection. You're just like, all right, dude, you're just like, you know, hurt and you're trying to attack me. But if they say something and I'm like, ooh, that kind of hits home. And I go look at me like, yeah, thank you. You're right. Let me look at that. I shared an example of this personally with one of my buddies who helped me move out here. This temporary move that I'm at living out here in the desert. And he helped me move and we went to dinner. I shared this on a, one of the videos, but I'm gonna share it again in case you're new or you haven't heard this story. Um, it, it, well, if you're, you're new, you didn't even watch that video. Whoever, maybe you probably haven't heard it, but I went out to dinner with a good buddy of mine. He was going through some relationship stuff. And since he knows me, he knows, you know, we're, we're close enough to where we can just communicate openly. 
I just kind of went in on him at it. And I was like, bro, I was like, here's what's going on, blah, 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 blah. And he was very, he was receptive to it. And he's like, you're right, you're right. No, I agree one entirely. And at the end, like he just, like I was coming on a little too strong, which was a lesson on how I need to work on my delivery. Whether I'm coaching people, well, especially if I'm coaching people professionally, but even per people in my professional life, and we're talking about things, I need to work on my approach. But he's like, that's what he said. He's like, dude, he's like, you're right about all this stuff, but man, like your approach, like your delivery is harsh, man. Like I, you know, like it's rough. Like that may be something you want to look at. And at first, of course, I felt my ego and it was like, no, I'm not, I ain't no shit, right? And I was like, no. But then I thought about it and I was like, oh man, you're totally right. And then I caught myself talking to my sister one time and it came up and I realized it with her, the way I was talking to her about some stuff. And I was like, I was like, holy shit. I was like, Daniel was right. I was like, dude, I'm doing the same thing. I was like, okay, what am I missing here? And what I was missing was compassion. That although I truly am coming from a good place and I wanted to help these people, I was not approaching it with compassion and empathy and like where's this person at emotionally mentally physically right now with the situation what is it they need to hear or how can I best assist them and guide them based on where they're at on the mental and emotional scale right now like how can I you know do they need tough love or do they need more of like a soft compassionate like tell me more like what's going on right and so it was interesting so he gave me that feedback and it wasn't a projection of like oh you're just being too harsh you know, it was like, no, dude, your delivery is rough. And I was like, ooh, you're right. I am being a little too piercing, if I may, right? Which is <laughs> no coincidence, that's my name. Um, so anyways, you get to discern for you if it's a projection or if it is something you really need to look at. But don't be afraid to be unapologetic and unbridled in your self-expression and your authenticity. Judgment of others and ourselves from others and ourselves is simply insecurity being expressed. It's our own need and others need to feel superior. That's the ego. That's where judgment comes from. It's, oh, he, her hair, he's too short, he's too fat, he's too broke, she's too ugly, she's too dark, oh, she likes this music, he likes to play the guitar, he likes, she likes to wear those shoes, oh, he likes to be barefoot and wear sandals, it's all just judgment. Oh, he's Muslim. Oh, she's gay. Oh, he's that. Oh, she's this. It never freaking stops, guys. You see that with the judgment? It's so easy. So people that are judging, are just, they're just scared. And so they need to cover up their fear and their insecurity by judging others and making them feel this way or that way so that they can feel superior to others and have this insecurity or have this security covered up, this false sense of security. Especially if people are like, oh, he's broke, she's broke, they do this for a living, that's all they do that. That's like the most level of insecurity because you're using this outside expression to show how you're better than others so that you can prove your self-worth. But whether you have money or not, does it really change your self-worth? No, because we're all human beings. We all bleed. We all like sex. We all need to sleep. We all need to eat. We all take poops. We're human beings, man. We're all the same. It's only the false sense of judgment and separation that we create within society on different levels and individually that has us feeling inferior, superior, and being in competition rather than collaboration. That's how it works. It's crazy. It's deep ass programming, man. It's thousands of years of programming. Uh, let it and they judge and rank however they need to. Who gives a shit? When you know who you are and where you're going, when you've healed enough, meaning you've reached certain thresholds of healing, you don't feel the need to prove anything to others or yourself anymore. You're mindful of others' energy. You're mindful of their thoughts, their feelings, their opinions. As a matter of fact, you're extra sensitive to their energy, their thoughts, their feelings, and opinions because you've healed. But you really don't give up because you know who you are and you're comfortable with it. That's how it works. You start to see this. You start to let go. This is true freedom. This is true power. This is true sovereignty within yourself. You begin to rewrite the rules of life. Your life. You write the rules to your own life. Because you're aware of and have let go of the rules that were programmed into you. By all the limiting beliefs of your parents, of society, of your teachers, and your friends. You let go of all that stuff. Your brain is a supercomputer. 
what kind of programming have you allowed into your supercomputer? A lot of the time you didn't have choice, you were just going by whatever the people around you were because that was the first influence you had, usually your parents, and so it was one usually of survival, if you're watching this probably, a fear of limitation, of all men are bad, or all women are whores, or uh, you know, you have to work your ass off to make any type of money and it requires blood, sweat, and tears and 70 hours a week. That's all programming, all that stuff. So your brain is a supercomputer. What kind of programming have you allowed into your supercomputer? You weren't aware or had a choice at first. You're just kind of taking it because we didn't have anything, you know, we were tabula rasa or clean slate as it was. And so the programming that came in wasn't yours. Now you're an adult. Now you understand that you're an operator. Even more so, you're awakening to the spiritual component of the mind, body, soul, the physical reality. So you are the operator. You are the user. You are Neo in the Matrix. So now what programming are you putting now that you're conscious of it? It's your choice at this point. As Dr. Joe Dispenza says, in the age of information, ignorance is a choice. Your vision requires your full expression. It's your heart your soul, your purpose manifested on the physical plane. How can you fully manifest what it is you want for your life, this grand vision that you have in your health, your relationships, your money, your professional work, having a life of purpose and adventure, all these wonderful things, whatever that looks like to you. How can you fully express and realize that vision if you're not fully ex expressing your authenticity in yourself? This takes practice, guys, like anything else. To learn to not give a what other people think of you and it comes with getting to know yourself when you get to know you and love yourself and you're in a place of full power and expression you got nothing to prove to other people now you're really grounded into what you want it's much easier to block out and let go of things that aren't aligned because you know where you're going your vision's so clear you're on your way that you're like dude is this helping me right now no okay i okay i work a five day week 45 50 hours um, I got a wife. I don't have kids right now. Okay. Uh, Pierce is helping. I'm waking up and I saw Pierce's video. He's helping me realize I don't want to do this job, man. I'm miserable. I don't want to do this. You know what I always wanted to do? I always wanted to own a, a nice little tiki bar in Hawaii. How do I make that happen? Is that really what I want to do? It is. Okay. Well, I work, I work a nine to five, 50 hours a week and I got this job uh, and I got a wife and you know, we do things on weekends and stuff. Okay. And I really want to build this business. Now I know I got to get out of this job. Now I see what he's talking about. It's getting toxic. I can't stay here, man. I'm waking up. I got to be free. I got to do this. Okay, great. Do it. Do it, bro. However, okay, my boys invited me out. My girlfriend's best friend and three other couples want to go out to dinner tonight and get hammered. Is that really what's best for me? Yes and no. Yes, I want to go and spend time with my wife and her friends and be social and let some steam off. But is getting hammered with all the other guys in the group really what I want? No. Nah. So I'm going to go out and have dinner. I'm going to have a drink or two. But I'm going to cut it off after that. Of course, you know how that goes. Peer pressure is a B. You're like, oh, the guys are like, come on, we're going to do a shot, man. We go, whatever, let the girls do their thing. You're having a boys night with your, you know, with all the other guys now, whatever. It's difficult to change when you're in that situation. Again, it's about aligning your actions with your vision. Okay, I know I want to build this vision this tiki bar and figure out how to move and finance and stuff i gotta get my butt up tomorrow it's friday night we're gonna go out and have dinner at seven but tomorrow i have a business conference about developing a small business specifically for bar owners that want to own small bars by this guy who's done it a bunch there's a uh, um a conference tomorrow at 8 a.m that i bought okay so i'm about to go out to dinner time and get hammered is this really the best thing no so it's difficult at the beginning but it's to do those changes, but it's very easy to see when you have your vision, what's aligned and what's not. And it gets easier and easier to get rid of the stuff and the people, situations, etc., that do not align with that vision, the more clear you are on what it is you want. I grew up a stoner, like a heavy stoner, uh, sold a bunch of weed in high school, smoked all through college, partied a bunch all the way through my 20s, man. Even now, right, every once in a while, all the way up into my mid-30s even, I would have bouts where I would just like smoke a bunch. Now I'm at a point uh, now where every once in a while, or even when I do, like I'll smoke a little, like if I've been working five days a week and I'm doing videos and I'm all burnt out, I just wanna sit on my ass for a day, I'm like, this is what I need. 
my nervous system is ramped up. I'm gonna smoke a little bit, I'm gonna eat some good food. I'm just gonna chill out today. But I've noticed that even now when I smoke the next day, since I barely do it maybe once a month or every couple of months, I'll wake up like a little groggy, a little slowed down. I'm like, I don't like this anymore. I don't like waking up feeling groggy. It clouds my, it definitely dampens my motivation. It clouds my cognition, my mental acuity, my ability to articulate and speak, my drive to want to read and learn and the mastery that I am forming and creating with words, which is part of my vision, which I know is part of my purpose. So I now, again, all that to be said, I'm just realizing it's not in alignment. I think there is a time and place for that. You know, like I said, but you just have to be able to discern what is in alignment. Are your actions aligned with your vision? Is everything on track? It's very interesting. And everyone, will, you'll have to decide for yourself. Your own, your power of discernment will have to heighten and develop so you can discern on your own if this is serving you or not. If these people are serving you or not. If having these uh, people that do these things around you, if you still want to be a part of that group, that's the hardest part for most people. But honestly, that's where the most power and freedom lies. Because how many people are brave enough to walk the path alone away from the crowd? Not many, but that's you. Doesn't Again, don't take it out of context. Doesn't mean you don't have friends. Doesn't mean you don't meet people. Doesn't mean you don't make connections and do these things. But I don't know, man. Are you still a four or five time a night out partier chasing girls? I don't know, sis. Are you still like, you know, about all that gossip and... You know, being around all these friends just talk trash on the girls so they can feel better? Maybe. Is that aligned with your vision? Is that who you are? Is that what the best version of yourself does? The powerful boss business owner that owns like, I don't know, six hair salons and like travels the world with her man? Is that what the best version of you does? Maybe. I don't know. Bunch of quotes today. Dr. Wayne Dyer, the first one. These ones I always just hold true in my heart very close. You have to be independent of the good opinions of other people. Shine bright, own your uniqueness, own who you are, embrace your uniqueness, be independent of the good opinions of other people because everyone is always going to have an opinion. So you have to be independent of the good opinions of other people. The people that judge you or whatever, don't worry about them. Those that mind, they don't matter those that matter they don't mind what you say what you do it's your self-expression uh this quote is next authenticity means erasing the gap between what you firmly believe inside and what you reveal to the outside world how big is that mask that you're wearing how many masks do you wear what happens if you got all your different groups of friends and co-workers together will they all see the same side of you or would you be acting different this was always apparent to me, man, because again, I became a master at being liked by everyone, making all these different friend groups. And when I bring different friend groups to each other, into each other, I still felt like me, but I could also feel the mask that I was wearing and that they would see different sides of me and they're like, shit, well, he's a little bit different. Well, that's okay, okay, that's interesting. Well, okay. But it, it's kind of worked in my favor because I would bring different groups of people together, which was, you know, and they were like, oh, we're not so different. We all kind of get along. Well, okay, you know him. All right, well, he's cool. You're cool. So it was interesting. But still, I wasn't being myself at the time. Now I am. Now it's almost dangerous how much I don't give up. It really is. Almost, almost, yeah. And I have to be mindful of that too, of like, yeah, whatever, like shutting people out. So anyways, uh, the last quote I made up, it just came to me. People will always judge what they don't understand. And they don't want to understand because they don't care. So if they don't care, why do you care what they think? They're just judging you because they don't understand you. They probably are not going to take the time to understand you because they really don't care about understanding you. They don't care about you. They got their own stuff. So why are you so concerned about what the other people, uh, people's opinions are who are judging you when you know they don't care and they don't understand you and they don't care to understand you? So why care? That's why you focus on you. You focus on your health. You focus on your career, your money, your vision, your lifestyle, the adventures you want to go on, the things you want to experience in your life. I, I don't know what this book is. I'll have to look it up. Um, there's a book, I think, with this woman who is a nurse at a, an old folks home. And she watched tens of thousands, hundreds, I don't know, who knows, hundreds of thousands of uh, people pass on, right? She's in a retirement home. 
but she would always have these conversations with these people and she would always ask like what their biggest regrets are in life. I'm gonna have to look this book up. I gotta read it now too. And basically, a lot of people said the same thing, right? It was like these 10 core things that all the thousands and thousands of elderly people look back on their life and they go, I wish I wouldn't have cared so much what other people think. I wish I, would have, I wouldn't have worked so hard or so much. I wish, it, I wish I would have taken better care of my body. You know, I wish I would have gone on more adventures. I wish I would have, you know. And so that's what this is about, guys. That's what this channel is about. This is what we're doing here. We're manifesting our visions for our lives, your own unique vision. You want to you wanna own um, the biggest freaking cowboy boot uh, company in northern Texas? Dude, that's your vision. Go to all the rodeos. Go do it, bro. Go and do it. I don't know. You want to have uh, like an online uh, makeup and beauty school for young girls and teach them how to do their makeup. Go online and do that, sis. Start a YouTube channel. Do your thing. Whatever vision it is for you. And you want to do that so you can learn to ride horses because that's what you're really passionate about and you're also passionate about beauty. So cool. You want to build this business so you can spend time riding horses and doing stuff that you never got to do because you like to do that as a young girl. See what I'm saying? I'm just making up random stuff, but this is somebody out there. This is you or somebody that you know or whatever out there. Every human being has their own vision, but it's only gonna come when you learn to be independent of the good opinions of other people. When you learn to embrace your uniqueness and you own all your weird shit that you do. I wear crystals and meditate and do yoga. And I like EDM festivals and concerts, man. That's who I am. And I like to work out. And I like sushi and Mediterranean food. I don't know, man. I'm just being me. You got to just be you. Just be you. You don't like sushi. That's fine. Do you. That's the point. That's what all this is about. Oracle card of the day. Tap three times to clear the energy of the previous reading. Ask for the purest and most divine truth in my highest good, your highest good, and the highest good of all. What do we want Spirit, what do we want to share with everyone? A confirmation method, confirmation message, something to encourage people to just be their unique selves, to let go of all this programming and be free. Don't worry about what other people think. We're like slaves to each other. I also think the interesting thing is, well, let me do this. That's the one. I always think the interesting thing is like, you know, so many people, they're like so desperate and starved for attention, but they're starved for attention because it's their ego that's wanting attention because they're not loving themselves and have a lack of self-worth because they, whatever experiences is dealt with. So they need more attention from other people and everyone wants so much attention because they are not loving themselves. So they do everything that everyone else does. They dress the same way. If all the trader stands, they say the same things. Oh, uh, was it bet? or whatever that's like you know in the in the conscious lexicon right now or um or is it uh like riz or you know all these buzzwords right that everyone says but they all talk the same they all dress the same but they're afraid to express their own uniqueness but they're doing the funny the irony is everybody talks acts and does the same things for approval for others because they want to be liked and they want to be unique, but no one's afraid. Most people are so scared to be themselves because of the judgment of other people. So they won't express themselves uniquely, which is what would bring them true happiness and fulfillment. I always think that this is the funniest irony or like an interesting thing. I don't know if I articulated that clearly, but you get the drift or most of it. Of course we pull this today. Leap of faith, zero. Archangel Metatron, Archangel Metatron. Look at the picture first what resonates with you, any colors, any visions, any signs, any messages that you're getting, that's a clear message from you, from your higher self that you need to look at and reflect on. The message for today, for me, it's this guy is just chilling. He's cool, he's got his bag, he's got his dog, it feels like me. Got my archangels on my side, we got butterflies, I'm out in nature just cruising, I'm on my journey, man, we cruising, that's what it means. Believe in yourself, certainly do. Listen to your heart, certainly do. Do what gives you joy. I certainly do. That's your message. Believe in yourself. Listen to your heart. Do what gives you joy. Screw what other people think. You're really into reptiles, man. You like iguanas and snakes and spiders and stuff. I don't personally, but you do. Dope, man. More power to you. Go and do that. There's a lot of people that like that. 
but don't let other people because they're like, oh, snakes, oh, because of shit. You like it, so you do it. She doesn't like it. That's okay. She's not for you, and you're not for her. And she's into, um, I don't know, fine wine. That's not you. That's her, though. Good. Go do it, sis. Get down on fine wine. Do what's important for you. Archangel Metatron brings you this card to encourage you to take the leap of faith. You are fully empowered to follow a new path in life that is full of excitement and wonder. The opportunities for evolution and growth are truly unlimited if you'll just have faith in yourself and believe in your dreams. Again, this is all about vision, all about authenticity, all about manifesting the life that you want. That's what we're doing. You have only to take the first step to find yourself on the way to a happier new life. Step out of your comfort zone. Take the first step. Your angels and guides will send helpful people to assist you along as you go. You're encouraged to be proactive in researching whatever information is required. Don't let a lack of experience or self-confidence hold you back. You are meant to have the joy you seek. Crazy, that random example, some dude that works a job with no kids but isn't whatever, nine to five, but he wants to own a tiki bar. That's like this message right here. That's you. It's your message right here. Take a leap of faith, man. Go for it, sis make it happen additional meanings being self-assured and believing in yourself childlike innocence unending curiosity the joy of life courage following your heart that's what it's about have the courage to break away from the societal norms the people places and things that you've been around follow your heart embrace your uniqueness own your authenticity that's what it's about love you so much guys i'll see you next time peace